Hey everyone, in this tutorial I wanted to share with you three ideas for using text and images in your e-learning projects. Um, this actually came from uh, an e-learning challenge a little while ago uh, and I'll share the link to the, the challenge entries in the description of the, the video that you can click on and have a look at uh, what other some other people have come up with in combining some, some text and, and images. So. If I just replay the scene so we can see, the, the, the effects I wanted to show you in this first one is simply the text coming, looking like it comes out of the picture. Uh, then on the next slide, we just have a simple shape overlay with some text uh, coming onto the slide. And then in the final slide, uh, it's just asking a question. And when you select an answer, the color of the background changes depending upon the selection that the user makes. So they're quite simple ideas, um, but something that you know, could add a bit of variety to your courses. So what I have on this first slide here is I have an image sitting on the slide. Now it's actually a little bit bigger than the slide, but that's okay, this would work the same. And I have my text box uh, here with my title on it. And I've got a, if I go to the animations tab, I've got a fly in animation for three and a half seconds. Now, at the moment, if I was to leave it like this, the text would actually fly from the very bottom of the slide up over the, the image and then end up where you see it. But what I wanted to do is try to create a bit of an effect where it looks like it's coming out from behind the, the buildings. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put on uh, another copy of this image. So I'm going to select my image, right click, and I'm just going to copy and then right click and paste. But however you copy and paste would be fine. Now I need to position this image directly over the other one. So what I'm going to do with my original image here is just right click and look at size and position and then go to the position tab and it, I can tell that it's the position of it on the, on the slide. Now that's what I was saying, it hangs over, so it's minus 64 and zero. Then if I grab my image, that I, the copy, and I do size and position, and I make that minus 64 and zero, that image is now directly over the top of the other one. Okay, now to create the, the effect of it coming out from behind the buildings, all I'm going to do with this image is I'm just going to crop it. So I'm going to select the image and go to the picture tool format tab and choose crop. Okay, and then I'm just going to uh, crop the image. So it comes down roughly about there. I want it to sort of look like it's coming out from behind the buildings. Okay, so something like that, but you could play around with it. And this would work if you were going sideways or from the top down. And then if I click off the image and finish the cropping, it, nothing actually looks any different. Okay, because those two, two images are directly uh, on top of one another. The other thing I need to make sure is that in the timeline is uh, almost like I've got like a sandwich that I have my main image in the background. Then the text box needs to be second and then the other cropped image needs to be on top. So it will look like the text is coming out from behind uh, that text box. And there it is, coming, looking like it's coming out. But it's actually coming out from behind an image that's on top of uh, another image in exactly the same place. So that's a, a kind of a neat effect. Um, that again, don't need any kind of special uh, tools or uh, picture tools or anything like that. Uh, other programs, you could simply do that in, in Storyline. So that's uh, not a bad idea for a title. Then I have my second slide where we just had some text uh, appearing on the slide and all that was, was just if I insert a rectangle shape and just simply drawing it to one side here and maybe formatting it out. Uh, to a particular color, something that's that's um, close. Now, what I what I what I actually did was I used the eyedropper, so for the fill color, and I think I, I just grabbed a piece of the 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 water here, and and same for the outline, the eyedropper. Okay, so I have a rectangle now. I could just leave it like that, uh, um, and have it completely cover um, the the slide, uh, or what I can do if I right click on the shape. I can format the shape and then I can just play around with the transparency. So maybe say we'll try like 
and so you can see through. Now, if that's a bit too see-through, just right-click again, format shape, maybe I'll bring it down to 30%, because you still need to think about how readable that text is going to be and, and whether the text will be readable. If you if you make the, uh, the shape too transparent, it might not be. And then I'll just put some dummy text in there, so equals L-O-R-E-M, open bracket, close bracket, and then I have some some text that could be talking about that image. Now, what I also can do, just to create the effect of it coming in, is select the shape and go to the Animations tab and just maybe do a fly-in animation. And when some of these animations, you, you need to have a look at the effect options because the default for the fly-in is always from the bottom, but I want it to come in from the right-hand side of my slide. And let's have a quick look at that, just do a quick preview. And there it just comes in to the side. Now, the thing with both of these uh, techniques, these, so these first two anyway, is that on, on the cover page, you, you need to maybe think about the type of image that you're using. So this one, the sky worked quite well. That gave me a nice kind of blank space to, 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 put, my, to put my text. Um, this one, uh, again, I guess I could have used the sky uh, area or just using the one side, you know, some part of the image that may not necessarily be uh, needed um, that, that you can kind of cover up. But that's part of the reason why I did the semi-transparent view so that you could still see some of that detail in the image underneath. Okay, and then the last one here is um, a, a question. Uh, now, I could have used like a freeform quizzing slide that would work. I've just done it on a regular slide. Uh, and what I've done is I've just uh, inserted some rectangle shapes with A, B, and C, and a question. And what I've got for each of my options is if I go to the States tab, I've actually created a state for each of the options. So for A, for B, and for C. So in this example, uh, C is the correct choice. So I've added some triggers just to change the state of each of those shapes to either the correct or the incorrect state, depending on the question. And this is where I find um, uh, naming is helpful. So I've got you know my answer or my options, and it helps me when I'm doing my my triggering. Now, what I also did was with the with the background is, or well, what I'm going to do is just to create um, a couple of versions of that, a correct and incorrect, where we change the color of the whole picture to become you know, red or, or green. So uh, with that image selected and go to the States tab and I'm going to click on Edit States and I'm going to create a new state. Now ordinarily when you're adding your new states, if you choose one of these states from the drop down, those properties will be built in. Okay, But in this case I, I want something that doesn't use those built in states. So I'm just going to call my new state correct. I'm going to add it. And for my correct state, I am going to go up to the Format tab. So I'm still going to be working on my picture. And then if I come over to the left here, I can recolor the picture. Now I'm just using the built-in color scheme, the default color palette, um, of which there's a green option. So I'm going to choose that. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could play around with the brightness. If that's a bit bright, you could make it a bit dark now, whatever you sort of want, but playing with these brightness and contrast options for your images can be helpful. Uh, and then, so that's my correct one, and then I just need another new state, and this will be my incorrect. And add. And this time for the incorrect state, I'm going to recolor it with the red option and maybe just bring the brightness down a little bit too. Now one of the things for accessibility is to not just rely on uh, colour alone to differentiate between correct and incorrect. So that's part of the reason why with my actual answer options I put a tick and a cross on the state of those so that uh, that's a visible symbol. So whether if somebody couldn't see the colours of the background they could see the tick and the cross to, to help know if they were correct or, or incorrect. So I've got my two states now for my background. I can say done editing states. Okay, so for my background picture, I've just named it BG in the in the timeline. Okay, so I just need some triggers to change the the color. So it'll I'll need a new trigger that if I want to change the state of my background to 
the incorrect state when the user clicks answer A, because that's one of the wrong answers. I'll also need another trigger to change the state of my background to incorrect when the user clicks answer B, because it's another wrong answer. And then a third trigger to change the state of my background to the correct state if the user clicks answer C, then OK. So the answers themselves have their own states, but the background has its own state as well. So if I have my question and the answers come up one by one and I go option A, it tells me that it's wrong. And the same for B, and then if I choose option C, the background changes. So yeah, so that's three, I guess, simple ways of, of, of um, using images and text in, in your e-learning courses. Some of them you might have seen before. Uh, like I said, I will put in a link to the e-learning challenge that has lots of great examples from other community members about how they incorporate text and images in their courses. And hopefully that might give you some ideas uh, for the projects that you're working on. I'll see you next time.